How yeah. many summers did you go down there before Teddy said, I'm going to give you your first shot? Um, It probably was like, I would say, two years straight, 14, 15, 16 is probably when he gave me that that first shot and put me in a room. Uh, Tony Thompson was working on a record, and he had a record called uh, – Let's go home and handle our business. Mm -hmm. I, and I and I and I did that record with um, a couple people in the B room, and I was blown away when the record came out. I didn't have a credit. I was blown away, like as a kid, knowing that you created this from scratch, knowing that you worked so hard on this. It blew me away, like not to see my name down well, as a producer. Business. Yeah, and that's I guess that was part of you know what I had to go through. Mm -hmm. Now. You know, I never really give credit to that being like my first placement. Like you never really, t I never talk about that. I never tell this story because yeah, I've never heard that story before. My name wasn't on the record, so my name was on the record. I never want people to be like, "Well, your name, look at me, look it up." Or oh, your name is not on the record. You know, I don't even. It's not even in my what. I don't even have it in my um in my casing of my catalog. But the publishing is there. The publishing is right in all of that because we got all of that stuff straight. Mm -hmm. And they know what I did, but at the end of the day, I never even use that as like, yo, that's my first record. I never say, yo, my first record is when I worked in the studio and in the B room at Future Studios and I did the song with Tony Thompson. I don't even say that, but that's the truth, right? But uh, but what happened was, and this is going when it, when it gets real heavy for me. Now I got the confidence and I'm home and I'm back home and I'm creating and I'm a junior in high school, junior in high school. And this is the craziest story for me, Sean. It, it, it hits home. And it hits home even at a time like now. So I had this teacher. And so, okay, so let me, let me get to it. My father had this, he had this rule. My father would let me create as much as I wanted to create. He knew I was, I was super creative, mm -hmm. right? So he was like, create as much as you want. And you can stay up all night if you want to create. You just better be on that school bus in the morning to go to school. So I was up to two, three o'clock in the morning every night creating, junior high school. Um, By that time, did you have a drum machine? Did you have any equipment? Oh yeah. Oh, I had. I had. Oh, I. I man, I, I. I. I'm so in the moment that I. I didn't even tell you one of the most crucial stories that matters to all of this. When I was 12 years old, I would read about. I. I was studying Teddy Riley, and I would read up Word Up magazine and all these magazines, mm -hmm. and I was. I found out that Teddy Riley and all the major producers they were using what was called an MPC 60. Yep. I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I gotta get this machine. Da 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 da. And and he looked at it and it was it was. Uh, and I found one in the Trade and Times magazine. They used to have this magazine called Trade and Times, and it was somebody in Pennsylvania selling one for twelve hundred dollars. Man, we ain't had no twelve hundred dollars. My dad one time he said, "Let's get in the car and take a let's let's take a ride. We take a ride up to this." man's house who's selling this MPC it was right in front of me, man. It was like Christmas. For, I'm looking at this machine like, I, mean, I, was, I was like going crazy for it. And my dad tried to talk the guy down on his price and the guy would not move. He's like, no, it's worth $1,500. i am selling it for $1,200. So my dad goes, give me a week. Let me think about it. My dad, when, he, when the guy said, okay, I'll give you one week. He said, I won't put it back in the paper. I'll give you a week. I asked the guy, I said, can I please have the manual to the, to the drum machine? He said, what for? He goes, um, I can't give you the manual because it comes with the machine. I said, well, can we go down the street and make Xerox copies of it? We copied literally like 80 something pages of the manual. I took the manual and I studied the manual every day. I, I remember being in church, in the back of the church, looking at the manual, like scoop down low so no one can see me. And I'm reading about, how to do this with the NPC, how to do this with the NPC. And um, so you had the presence of mind at that young age. I was 12. To say, can I get the manual? And if I can't, can we just go make copies of every single page? Yep. And then when, and ask, before you go on with this story, because it was something I wanted to get to later on in the interview, you know, it's a lot of people out there and they're selling the law of attraction. I'm a man of faith myself, just like you. Is, is this just God given? Was this just your destiny? Is it the reason why you're on earth? 
looking back at it because I don't know a 12 year old kid who would walk up and say, let me copy every single page of this manual and I'm going to study it cover to cover. Is this just something you looking back that God put me on this earth to yeah. make music? It was predestined. You know, it was, it was what, it was what God, Half of my half of my life, you know what I mean. Like he has a purpose for all of us, mm -hmm. you know? and you you know when you look back and you're like, okay, I understand why I'm here. <laughs> I understand why I'm still here and doing what I'm still doing. Like it could have been a short lived career. Some people don't have the 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 longevity, quarter, the quarter of a century type of career. Some people yeah. don't have, especially in producing, right? Um, but when I look back, I know like it was God's hands on my life. Period. Flat. Point blank. Period. Oh, uh, and as I studied this manual at 12 years old for one week, I was begging my dad, dad, please, can we go back to that? But no, we didn't have it though. I know, I knew, I knew it was like a fairy tale, but it was just something to be that close to that machine. Cause you couldn't even see that machine in local music stores that sold equipment in South Jersey. They sold like $80, $50 drum machines. Right. And that's what I had, right? I had the, the DR550 that was like 50 bucks at the time they, they didn't have those things so i just wanted to see it again so a week later we go back again my dad tried to talk him down and he wouldn't move from the 1200 and my dad looked at me and said come here i want to tell you something and he took me on the side he goes i borrowed the money off of my life insurance to get you this machine oh in, in that moment bro in that moment, of course, you can imagine the tears coming down my eyes, my eyes swollen up because he would do such a thing. And uh, but my dad was also business too. He made me sign a contract. He, he said, "I'm gonna teach you contracts early on." And we got home. He had this. He did it with, right with his hand, and he goes, "He made me sign this contract that I'm gonna pay him back that twelve hundred dollars, right?" And I signed the contract, dated the whole nine, and. Um, and it wasn't even about paying it back. I think he was just trying to teach me, like, okay, this is what you want to do. I'm going to teach you how to be. I'm doing that right now with my 11, with my 12-year-old. My 12-year-old son, RJ, my junior, I'm doing the same thing with him, trying to teach him things early on. And so I had this machine, Sean, check this out. I had this MPC. I'm opening up the box. I'm looking at I'm, I'm hooking it all up. Bro, kid you not, I knew the machine just like that. You I knew read, the machine. I, I read the manual so – I was so – intense with my reading and studying in that week that when I plugged up the machine and turned it on, I knew everything to do. I didn't have to figure out. I didn't have to, I literally knew everything. We didn't have YouTube back then. Wow. We didn't have, we didn't have wow. tutorials. We didn't have tutorials. It's like if, if I told you, Sean, hey man, so here's the manual. When you get up in the morning, you got to brush your teeth. You got to put, you know what I mean? And I told you, and, you, if you start reading that, you're going to just know that's what I got to do. I literally did it, man. I, and I was going, I was in, like, day one. So, so just, you, 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 you get it, you take it out the box, and no, it starts no to learning, No learning curve whatsoever. I was wow. in. I was in, full on, boom, programming, in. Figured it out like that. Like, it was no, like, my own, my own family was, like, blown away by that because I knew I like I know I said I, I read the manual I read it from the beginning to the end probably twice because I was so into it like I knew exactly what everything meant it said I keep looking over because I got an NPC to my left so yeah. every so, so I knew every word word I knew how to sample right away all of that that's you know? insane yeah and um and before and, we go too far please tell me your your dad kept that contract I'm sure he has it somewhere. I hope he did. I'm sure he has all and, that. And, and, and if he has it, one day you need to post that. You I know. Need to put I know. That. That's I, such an inspirational story. I don't want to gloss over it. I know we're moving the interview along, but I love the fact that your dad believed in you. He believed in his child's potential and he took a, a, a loan on his own life insurance to see your dream through. I love that story and I love that he made you sign this contract. So if you ever get a chance, I think that that's something you need to put out there to the world because it is so inspirational to, to, to parents. It is so inspirational to kids who, you know, uh, uh, they have this dream, they have this thing inside of them that they know that they want to get out. I'm committed to this, I'm dedicated to this. And you are living proof that it's never too, you're never too young. You're Not never too young. young. 
you, you just gotta believe you gotta nur- you gotta have someone of course to nurture your gifts you have everyone i believe has gifts and we need we need people to nurture our gifts we need people custom model had to see mike tyson as there you go as gifted he didn't just see him as a a person from brooklyn that was in the street fight he saw him as there's a gift there and i need to nurture it right it's potential in all of us and 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 the sad thing is when when people die before their time that potential is in the grave every time by the time i go back i'll drive by a grave i'll drive by a grave site and i'm like man so much potential in this grave site right now it's crazy to me right so we got to make sure we take the initiative to nurture any gift and talent that we see in other people if we see it in it we see I, even with my own staff i see stuff that they don't say i'd be like they think they be that, yeah i'm here to work to, to just just to do marketing i'm like nah it's a bigger it's a bigger plan for you it's a bigger plan like you know what i mean like you're way bigger than just marketing by the way What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.